burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you are like family to me. I suppose that's why. Aww. Sure. I'll keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? Yeah! I'll sing so loud that my voice is gonna reach the sky! Oh, she's got max professor level, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna do a thing. Uh, it's a paralog chapter. Yes. Okay, certifications. Um, yeah. He's gonna be a holy knight. I hope he passes. Okay, good. <laughs> That's 88! Good job. Oh, Dor Dorothea. I could turn her into a G army, but I'm not gonna do that. Petra, almost level 20, or er, almost level 30, I mean. So I'm trying to turn her into a trickster. That's taking a while. Um. Your bond with this person is very deep. To deepen the bond further, you'll have to wait until after the war ends. Okay. Standing tall, I see. Edelgard, hello. What do you think of this horse? An equine marvel, no? Look how intelligent he is. You can see it in his face. Certainly much smarter than your horse. What? more impressive than the pale little sprigs you have there. And, as I'm sure you know, redness symbolizes courage and strength. Okay, you know he's being a little dick. Stop. I can't believe you're wasting my time with a petty one-sided rivalry. What are you complaining about? You told me not to publish my pamphlet, and I complied. I've had enough of your foolish antics. Very well. I will grant you the duel you so desperately desire. But, when I win, you must forfeit the right to bother me with your ridiculousness. Forever. Do we have a deal? Ah, so you'll fight me after all? Wonderful. To battle, then. All right, Edelgard. Have at me. As you wish. Ha! <laughs> it only took you one blow? How? I can't afford to hold back against an opponent like you. I led with my fastest, strongest drunk. Fastest and strongest? <laughs> You're just flattering me. I have been defeated. Utterly. I cannot believe I was foolish enough to challenge such a plainly superior opponent. The difference in our skill level is not so great as all that. If you had taken the first strike, you might have won. That's why I didn't give you the chance. I do not think talent is what separates us so much as readiness. I had not the faintest idea of what to expect from a real duel. I was playing, but you were not. That such an ill-prepared noble would think to challenge you? It is laughable. Ferdinand. Okay, Edelgard with Petra. I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. 
Hubert was primed and ready to remove you. I ordered him to stand down. You have my thanks. I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I'm having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you know? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on on your shoulders, and that is including Bridget, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Bridget on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. <sighs> <laughs> yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so. Uh, Hubert with Fernand. Show them this letter. Threaten them. Do what you must. Now go. Yes, sir. Hubert, that letter. Is that what I think it was? I suppose there's no denying it. But Edelgard... explicitly forbade me to send it. Yes, I know. I cannot believe it! You disobeyed a direct order? I thought you were her loyal aide. Unwaveringly. All that I do, I do for her. I seem to recall you expressing a similar sentiment. It is our role to guide her when she is on the wrong course of action. Is that not what you said? You are not supposed to do it in secret. When you disagree with your leader, you must voice your concerns directly. Otherwise, what is the point? The point is the same. Lady Edelgard's best interests are served whether she knows it or not. She needs not trouble herself with the mundane details of my actions. Only results matter. You are sorely misguided. When I believe that Edelgard is making a mistake, I tell her as much. Through discussing the matter, I sometimes find that I was mistaken. To skip that process, to make a decision that is not yours to make, perhaps your advice is simply useless then. Excuse me? Listen to yourself. If I do as Lady Edelgard requires, then you tell me to be more independent. But if I tread my own path, I am misguided. I suppose the fault is mine for expecting any useful advice to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Ugh, I have had enough of your grousing. To think, I started to believe you were a useful aid. Ah, uh, Bernadetta. of war raging all around us, tea never fails to soothe the soul. Do you not agree, Bernadetta? Um, I hadn't actually thought about it, but yes. Excellent. Oh, that reminds me. Hmm? What's that? A long time ago, 
My parents were in talks to arrange my marriage with a certain young lady. She never set foot outside of her room, and she made little dolls to curse her perceived enemies. Such were the rumors. Frightened, I dissuaded my parents from going through with their plans. I can see that. She does sound pretty frightening. I relate to the staying in the room part, though. That girl was you, Bernadetta, a daughter of House Varley. What? I don't make dolls to curse people. You are a skilled embroiderer, no? I guess I was wrong. You are not making dolls. I did make dolls, but cute ones. Nice little carnivorous plants and things. What? Ah, maybe I should not have brought this up. Why not? Carnivorous plants are adorable. Uh huh. Yes, adorable. Anyway, if I had actually known you, I would have accepted the proposal. Um, why? Did you have some scheme in mind? No, I just mean, now that I have gotten to know you, I would have been happy to... So, you're saying you... me? <laughs> it's getting kinda hot in here, isn't it? Maybe, um, maybe it's the tea. Why are you getting so worked up? That was all a long time ago now. A long time ago? Yes. Now we are soldiers fighting together in the same great conflict, right? And my parents are gone. So any agreements they might have cooked up would be completely invalid. I guess so. Just think. If we had been married, we would not have been able to build such a deep friendship. That's true. Yeah, we never would have gotten this close. I would have given up on the relationship my parents chose for me and shut myself away even more. So all in all, I am glad I refused to marry that doll cursing princess. Hey! I said I never made cursed dolls! <laughs> sorry, sorry. I am just glad to have met you at the monastery. I had better take my leave. We should have tea together again sometime soon. Yeah. Dorothea. Hey, Dorothea. Something's been bothering me. I kind of feel like you act more casually around me than you do with other people. Casually? I don't know what you mean. I just feel like you're always asking me to do things that might make other people uncomfortable. Like when you asked me to clean your room. You're not very flirty toward me like you are with the other guys. You seem weirdly comfortable around me. Hmm. You pay more attention than I would have thought. Hey. Are you interested in me? You know, interested, interested. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, it just seemed weird, and I was curious. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's true that I do find you quite a convenient little helper at times. It's like you're, how to put it, you're like a little brother to me. Oh. Really? It's not exactly a compliment. No, but it's true. And now that I've thought about it, I like the whole idea. Why don't you try calling me Big Sis and see how it feels? Oh, I heard this no, on the play. That's not gonna happen. Why not? I'm embarrassed just thinking about it. Oh, come on. It's just a goof. You can manage it at least once, can't you? Please. Oh, I know. If you do it, I'll stop using you for my chores. How's that sound? That's an enticing offer. Fine. Once. <sighs> it says. <laughs> well done, Caspar. You're such a cute little boy. I'm proud to have you as a sibling. I'm not cute, and I'm not little. How would you feel if I made you call me Big Bro? Oh? Well, I wouldn't mind that at all. Big Bro. Oh, God. Caspar, run away. Is something wrong, big bro? Okay, run. Oh, this is the worst. I think Caspar's personality would have really matched Chugga Conroy. That would have been awesome if he voiced Caspar. <laughs> Team, really? There's no way 
I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta, is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worried. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. Killer? Fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task. A task? Yes, just a task. A completely mindless task. Feel it. There, in the grass. Prey is moving. Just like a vegetable in the wind. Give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a blade. It is just your task. Uh, right. That makes sense. It's just like cutting a stem. You are now a hunter. You have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Well, leave it to me. I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables. I have belief in you. Aw, oh, thanks, Petra. I can do this! Make way for Hotmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie. That was funny. Uh, I'm gonna save here, guys. Uh, next time, we will continue this story. See you guys later. Bye. This is definitely gonna be a much shorter campaign because I'm gonna skip everything aside from just the main missions. Because I think I already showed it in the other one. Great Bridge Coup. So we are on this side instead of uh, with, um, what's his name? King of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, Dimitri, has declared fealty to the Church of Seros and is raising an army in preparation for all out war with the Empire. As leader of the Alliance, Claude maintains a facade of neutrality amidst infighting between those who support and those who oppose the Empire. Meanwhile, the Black Eagle Strike Force plans to capture Alliance territory before Edelgard takes the war to the Kingdom and the Church of Seros. Alright, let's go take some Alliance With territory. With set on capturing Deirdre at the center of House Regan's territory, she leads a march across the Great Bridge of Murden to establish a bridgehead. Let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, I really don't care about the rest of this, the, uh, the stuff that I need to do. I'm just going to go do only the story. We're about to commence our attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. But first, allow me a moment of your time. Okay. What do you need? It is something that I can only ask of you. Listen well. Okay. It concerns Lady Edelgard's uncle, the regent of the Empire. 
Lord Arendelle. Although he is currently cooperating with Her Majesty, he maintains his own sizable military troops. It seems to me that his plans differ from our own. I assume you recall a certain group scheming from five years ago? Solon and Kranya. They both served Lord Arendelle. Why? He must be dealt with. Professor, I understand how you must be feeling, considering what they did to your father. I know it must be foul to even consider cooperating with their kind. However, their power is essential for us at present. Edelgard also strongly opposed the idea at first. Our enemy is the Church of Seros itself. It cannot be toppled with the Empire's might alone. Those working under Lord Arendel are extremely hostile toward the Church. And the enemy of our enemy is... Well, I think you sufficiently understand by now. Are you sure that's a good idea? Until all of Fodlan is united, it is a necessary evil. As for how we deal with him afterward, time will tell. Regardless, her Majesty and I wish to join our power with yours. You should know that in her heart, Her Majesty regards that group as enemies of herself and her family. They used her father, the former Emperor, as a puppet, and murdered her siblings with their vile experimentation. I believe Her Majesty may have told you some of this herself. Yeah. That is why this was a very painful decision for her to make. I will do all I can to ensure her suffering is not in vain. And I hope I can count on you to do the same. As for all I have told you, please keep it in mind as we march forward. More importantly, I implore you to fight as best you can for Edelgard. From the bottom of my heart. Absolutely. I this of you. Okay. Units, everybody, okay. Let's go. We'll be capturing the Great Bridge of Murden, a key strategic location of the Leicester Alliance. Claude will surely be sending reinforcements, so we must prevail before they arrive. All right. Our opponent is Judith, the so-called hero of Daphne. We can handle her, so long as we don't get careless. The boy said to run if I was in danger, but I could never do that. I'll hold out until reinforcements arrive. Okay. So I recorded way too much Violet. I'm at the, uh... I'm at the Elite Four right now, or I'm at the, uh... The Pokemon League. So I won't be recording that for a while. Like, probably the, the second or third week... Or no, the second week of, uh... Of November. Uh... Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. All right, uh, Linhart, Dee Dee. She's really awesome. All right, so that's one party, and then we got our second party over here. Teresa, Dorothea, Petra. Anna. Uh, 
Ow. Jeez. Nice. Okay, so first. No an armor slayer? I don't, so we're sorry. Ouch! Let's settle this with our fists! Damn! I think you have a mace, right? 